I have a joke to tell you here first before we get started. I have a min in my mouth because I've been struggling with sinuses or something and I have this reoccurring hacking cough every now and then. But this min in my mouth as I got up to read the gospel this morning reminded me of this story of a preacher who uh, every time he'd give the preach he'd put a mint in his mouth and he'd preach as long as he had a mint in his mouth. He, he, that was his timing. He knew when, once the mint was gone that he would stop preaching. Well one week he got up and he put something in his mouth that he thought was a mint. And he preached, and he preached, and he preached, and he preached, and it was going on an hour. And finally somebody was like, and he reached in his mouth, and he had inadvertently put a button in his mouth. <laughs> but I do have a mint in my mouth, and I won't preach as long as it's there, so it's okay. But, <clears throat> you know, we read this passage of Scripture this morning. We've been in the Gospel of John now, the sixth chapter of the Gospel of John, for about three or four weeks. And, and it's all about the bread of life. And finally we get to this passage where Jesus says, you have to eat my flesh and drink my blood. Can you imagine being one of the disciples or those gathered there that day when Jesus said this? What would you be thinking? Exactly. Really? we got to do what? You want me to do what? You want me to eat your flesh and drink your blood. But wait a minute, Jesus, because there's problems with that. God told us we're not supposed to do these things. And actually it does. In the Bible it says several times, eating of flesh is an abomination. It says it in Psalm 27 verse 2. It says it in Zechariah chapter 11 verse 9. And actually the Aramaic phrase, eater of flesh, was a name used by Hebrews for the devil. So if you were an eater of flesh, technically you are the devil. Now Jesus is telling us that we have to eat his flesh. And he's also telling us we have to drink his blood, which is prohibited by Levitical law to drink the life of an animal, which is, according to God, the blood. So the blood was supposed to be all drained out. If you read Leviticus, you'll see several times it's talked about draining the blood from an animal before you eat it. And you're not supposed to eat the fat either. The fat belongs to the Lord, and you can't drink the blood or eat the blood because that is the life of the animal, and that belongs to God. So these are things that are pro expressly prohibited by the Old Testament. In Genesis chapter 9, verse 4, in Leviticus chapter 3, verse 17, in Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 23, we're not allowed to drink blood. But now Jesus is telling us, you have to eat my flesh and drink my blood. This isn't the first time that God has taken something that is looked upon by the world or even himself as being negative and spun it around to make it a positive. Several times this happens. It's, it happens over and over and over again. This passage here where Jesus tells us we have to eat his flesh and drink his blood, we know as Christians now is referring to this meal right here. A positive spin. And this is the only positive spin on eating flesh and drinking blood in all of the, in all of the Bible. This passage, these passages here in John. Everywhere else it's a negative. And it says that you're an abomination and that you're going against what God has called you to do. But God takes these things that are abominations and spins them around. Takes our whole world sometimes and turns it upside down. Several times he does this. One is the cross. In Deuteronomy it says that cursed is the man who hangs on a tree. What is the cross made out of? A tree. That's referring to Christ. When Christ died on the cross, he was a cursed man. Deuteronomy says it. But God takes something that is an abomination and turns it into something that is life-giving. He takes eating of flesh and drinking of blood, something that is an abomination, and turns it into something life-giving. He takes us as sinful people, not able to follow His plan, and turns us into saints. He takes something that can't be in His sight and turns us into His children to go out into the world to spread His message of love to everybody. So drinking blood and eating flesh. Jesus said these two things because they're not two things, but one. In the Hebrew, the eating of flesh and flesh and blood, not eating flesh, but flesh and blood in Hebrew, as in English, can give us an understanding of two things. One is two separate things. But in Hebrew, when someone talked of flesh and blood, 
It meant the whole being. Meaning, you have to take Jesus as a whole. Take him as he is. You can't take part of him. You can't take the part that you want. You have to do both, flesh and blood. You have to take all of Jesus the way that he is and receive him as he is. And in verse 53, it tells us that, that if we're not eating, let me find it real quick, just to make sure. If, if, we're, if we not eat his flesh, so Jesus said, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. The grammar here, though, is, may be a little bit different. Right? If we do not eat his flesh, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood. That sounds like do it once and you're okay, right? This means yes, this means eat his flesh once, drink his blood once. Like you could have communion once in your life and you're set forever. Could it be? It could be. The grammar here, though, doesn't really give us that. The phrases here could be if you are not drinking or are not eating, if you are not eating or are not drinking, there is no life in you. They're present tense, ongoing action. It's not a one-time event that you can take partake of communion or partake of eating of Jesus' flesh and Jesus' blood. It's an ongoing kind of thing. It's not a one-time event. It's a thing that happens again and again and again and again. Like you could get on the, the conversation of how often should we have communion? Once every week, which we do here, which is wonderful. Once a month, once every three months. How many of you remember when it was four times a year? No? A couple people. Twice a year. And you remember when you had to declare your, that you were coming to communion? You had to call the pastor on Saturday before to make sure that you knew? Nobody? I got a couple head checks because I'm, I'm, I'm... Okay. Our communion practices have changed over the years. Because it's something that Martin Luther even told us that we should do more often. It's something that we should want to do. That we should want to have the body of Christ within us. And every time that we eat bread and drink wine and we remember Jesus, we're actually partaking in communion. This isn't any special bread that we have. It's not special wine. You, can, you could buy this bread and wine and have it at home if you wanted to. And that's what Jesus is trying to get to us. Jesus take, is talking this whole chapter of John chapter 6 about bread and wine and body and blood. And we have to remember back to the beginning where Jesus fed the 5,000, right? That's where John chapter 6 started with the boy with the five barley loaves and the two fish. The five barley loaves. They're not anything special. They're the bread that the poor people would have. They're the bread that everybody would have. It's the bread that each and every person in that day had on their table every night when they sat down to eat. So every night when you partake of this, every time that you remember me in partaking of bread and wine, you are partaking of the body and blood of Christ. You are doing this all the time. And you're eating or gnawing on flesh. How many of you are a little taken back by that in the bulletin? Gnawing on flesh. Right? We're not supposed to chew this, right? You're supposed to just let it sit, uh, sit on your tongue and dissolve, right? Thank you, Bill. No, you're not. The word in John is a nasty word for eating. And it, it, it truly is a gnawing or an audible. How many of you have ever heard somebody eating something that they loved so much that it was just, they were smacking their lips and just making the nastiest noise they could possibly make, right? Ribs, fried chicken, good fried chicken. A juicy steak, right? And you just... It's just so good that you can't help yourself. That's the word that John uses here when you're eating of the flesh. It's not a, it's not a nice, polite, you know, Martha Stewart kind of meal, sit down and everybody has all their napkins and everything in the right place. It's a down and dirty, lick your fingers kind of thing here as we're talking about. It's a gnawing on to chew, to audibly eat. And John uses this word because he doesn't want us to over-spiritualize what Jesus is doing here. Jesus is telling his disciples that this bread and this wine, these two generic earthly elements have become my body and blood and God is doing something miraculous through this. And you can't take it away from the people. It's not a spiritual thing. 
It's a down to earth. It's about bread and wine. It's about chewing and swallowing. It's about drinking. It's about doing these things that we do as humans. And the benefits of us eating of this, they're all listed right there in our reading for you. Did you see them? Verse 53, he says that if you eat and drink of my body and blood, you will have life in yourself. Verse 54, he says, you have eternal life. If you eat my body and drink my blood, you have eternal life. It's not a you will sometime in the future. You have it right now when you partake of this. You will be raised by Jesus on the last day. You will remain in Jesus and He will be in you. And you will live through Jesus and you will live forever. You will have life. You will have eternal life. You will be raised up by Jesus. You will always be with Jesus and He'll always be with you. And you will live in Jesus forever. The emphasis here that Jesus gives us by eating His flesh and drinking His blood is about life and living both now and always. Not only in this life, not only is this life presented to us with the image of eating and drinking, but also in the relationship of Jesus to the Father and us to the Father through Jesus, right? Just as Jesus is the source of... Of Jesus' source of life came from God the Father, from being sent by the Father and from the living in obedience through the Father. So our source of life comes in our relationship with Jesus. Believing in Him and eating and drinking Him and being sent out into the world to go and share His love with everybody. Because we all know that you are what you eat, Right? Which is interesting because I've never seen anybody turn into a ho-ho. <coughs> right? Through the wonders of our bodies, though, the things that we put into our mouths and we chew, or the things that we drink and we swallow become a part of us. When we eat bread and we drink wine, they become a part of us. When we eat donuts and drink coffee, they become a part of us. <laughs> when we eat pretzels and drink beer... They become a part of us, right? Whatever food or drink we put into our bodies ends up nourishing our blood, which in turn nourishes every cell in our body. So Jesus is not just in our hearts, and Jesus is not just in our heads, but Jesus, as the bread and wine we ingest, goes everywhere to every last little nook and cranny of our body. Jesus is there. He's a part of every last centimeter of you. Because He is the bread and He is the wine. And when you take Him into you, He nourishes every last little molecule of your body. So each and every time we celebrate the Eucharist, the God's Supper, the Holy Communion, or we sit down at a table and we eat bread and drink wine with our family and our friends, we celebrate God's promises made to us. Man, they are very concrete promises because we can touch this bread and we can feel that wine. It's a concrete promise that God is here for us in these common elements. That God not only cares for us, He not only cares about our births and our deaths, not only our marriages and our jobs, not only our successes and our failures, but God has joined Himself with us And with everything that happens to us, God is there through Christ, through the Word made flesh, and for His body and blood given and shed for us. So come and eat and allow Jesus to be a part of you. And know that no matter where you go or what you do, that He's always there. So eat and drink and share that love with everyone in the world.